So now we're gonna take these covers off. There's one bolt there, one underneath, another one over there. So it's one, two, three, four, and apparently that's it. And then uh, we'll be able to access uh, the triangle frame over here, as well as the uh, subframe itself. There's gonna be three bolts on this side, and then there's gonna be another three bolts on that side. And same thing, we're gonna remove the little plastic cover, which I'm guessing it's either in between a 10 mil or an eight. So we're gonna do that, we're gonna tackle that. We're gonna remove those covers like uh, I said previously. And we're going to access the bolts. We're not going to take them fully off. We're actually going to put a, a jack over here to uh, to support the weight from the subframe. Um, then we're going to jack it up just to the point that there is on the jack. And then we'll fully remove the bolt. And then we'll uh, slowly drag it down. So let's continue with that. And I'll be right back with you guys. Alright, so we have we removed the covers. So it's... Um, so there's three that are, and one that is 10, as you can see here. Eight, these are eights. And then this one over here, that's a 10. It's gonna be for that pin right there. That's gonna be a 10, and then the rest are gonna be eights, which are gonna give you access, like the black bar in the middle, behind, uh, underneath the, the subframe. All those are 16 mils. Over here in the bottom, the little bracket over here, that's two, two in the middle, and then another two at the other end. I already placed a jack over here, underneath the subframe. And now we're gonna tackle by removing the three bolts on each side. There's one, there's two, three, so we're gonna remove those. We're gonna be able to remove the remove the oil pan. Three bolts. Rear, middle, and front. So we move those out of the way. We did the same thing on the other side. They're all taken off. We still have the jack in the middle, and then we're just gonna slowly uh, lower it down, just to um, separate this a bit. And we'll continue from there. All right. So we managed to remove the oil pan. We've also removed the oil pickup line which has, I don't know if you can see, it has these bolts over here, some short bolts, and it also has three long bolts. They feel super light, so I'm guessing these might have to be replaced. Uh, all these bolts are size E10. The three long ones are the ones that hold the pickup line that goes from in here, like all the way over here, and then it has that metal plating. Um, I'm sorry, um, I didn't manage to get that, but we're here now, and we'll probably go back to it whenever we're installing it again. So this is the cylinder that we have to replace. We're gonna start by removing the piston. We're gonna undo these bolts. So I'm just gonna double, triple, quadruple, make sure which one is which. I don't wanna take off the wrong one and have two of them loosened up, okay? So I'll be right back with you guys once I figure that out. <laughs> So we replaced the piston now, simple, clean, brand new piston. So what we had to do was again, remove the bolts. They were uh, pretty tight. Again, make sure it's a very, uh, the socket sits flat against the bolt so that you don't break off the head. It was an E10 as well. Once you remove those bolts, the piston will come out super easy. Uh, just make sure that uh, whenever, if you're pushing it uh, from the bottom with rubber so that you do not make any marks on, I used the rubber mallet and I also used the end of my ratchet which was rubber and since it's a extended ratchet, I pretty much pushed it out. It came out really simple. I used the bearings that it had already at the bottom over here i used those with the other piston because since i'm not replacing all of them you know might as well not do it here's the piston that we removed the little bolt that held the diesel valve well this thing actually went through as you can see there's the hole luckily uh the bolt didn't cause any more damage it pretty much just fell out, uh, fell off from the bottom. Uh, thank God. Now it's time to put everything back. We're gonna clean the oil pan. We're gonna get that ready, the oil pan gasket, and then we're gonna start uh, by tightening everything up from the bottom. We're gonna make sure we use the correct torque spec on every bolt that we removed and replaced every bolt that we have removed so far. We're actually gonna be fixing the uh, 
oil pan. I was using an a, uh, ACS magnetic drain plug. Had to cut it. I removed the oil pan. Sent me a replacement bolt, which is right here. I got this kit. This is a Helicoil thread repair kit. This one has the the thread repair kit that I needed, which is the M10 by one and a half. Looked at the uh, instructions right there. This is the first time me actually doing this. And this is the measurement that is supposed to be. That's the thread that uh, the thread type that it's supposed to be for my oil pan. Apparently, please correct me if I'm wrong. So what I did was, I took one of these heli coils. So what I did was the following. This was the measurement that I was gonna use the M10 by one and a half. So I opened up this bag, got these one of these heli coils, which is what's supposed to go inside, and I got my bolt and it doesn't fit the bolt is actually bigger so I'm assuming I'm guessing that what happened because my oil pan got all stripped down was because they made a mistake when they sent me the bolt this bolt the old one they sent me the wrong measurement they saw they sent me a bigger one and that's what stripped out my oil pan so I contacted them, I told them, hey, you know what guys, uh, this happened to my oil pan, I cannot remove it, I bought this like no more than a year ago, blah, blah, blah. All they did was, um, I think they asked me for a picture of, of the drain plug. They're like, oh, send us a picture and uh, blah, blah, blah. So I did that, they sent me a replacement, which is this one right here. So I'm thinking to myself, okay, so if that's not the measurement, that's not the correct measurement, well, I'm going to go one up and check to see if this is the correct one. So this is the M12 by 175. And as you can see, this threads in perfectly fine. I'm going to have to wing this. I'm not going to be using... The drill to clean out the uh, the oil panda hole because I don't have a drill with me at the moment. And that's how you do it. So this is what we did. We tapped it with with the M10 by 1.5 bit tap, as you can see right there. If we use the heli coil for that size, the hole is gonna be smaller. So if it's smaller, we cannot use this bolt. We're going to have to get another smaller one. Or we're going to have to buy another one and we don't have them. So I tapped the hole with that tap with the M10 by one and a half. And now the bolt goes in perfectly fine. It goes in super easy. There's no problems whatsoever. What we're going to do is we're going to try. We're going to try that out for now. If for whatever reason we still have leaks and whatever, we'll jump over to the M12 by 175 uh, tap we'll use the helicoil we'll do it the legit way with everything and then uh, I'll give you guys back a review on that so for now this is done we've tapped the oil pan everything went well so far and the next thing to do is install the oil pan all right so that's done we're gonna torque this down to I believe it's uh, I think it's 18 18 foot pounds back and install the oil pan put everything into place 
uh, bolts on and everything try to torque everything down to spec and then we'll be able to jump over to installing the cylinder head